In this video, we'll see how you can read a series of analog voltages from an Arduino and store them in a MATLAB variable. This will also illustrate some of the limitations of Arduino versus higher end commercial hardware. So before you can communicate with an Arduino from MATLAB, you first need to install the MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware. It includes the function Arduino, which I can execute and give it the uh, port and the board name. I have this on port COM4 and it's an Arduino Uno equivalent. And yep, taking a moment to connect. And once it connects, you'll see that I have some various properties and available pins. Right? And I can always search through the documentation to see all the different ways to communicate with it. Uh, with any uh, MATLAB object, I can also execute methods on that to see the different functions that are available. And so now if I want to read a voltage off the analog pins, I can simply say read voltage of A analog pin 0. And this reads a voltage of 0.71. Now it just so happens that I have a TMP36 temperature sensor connected to pin A0. And if I read the data sheet, I can see that this can be converted to a temperature in Celsius uh, with an offset of 0.5 volts and a scaling factor of 10 millivolts per degree C, which equates to 100 uh, degrees C per volt. So that's temp C. And it looks like it's about 21.8 degrees in my office. I can, of course, uh, convert that to a temperature in Fahrenheit by uh, multiplying and adding an offset. And see that it's about uh, 71.3 degrees in my office right now according to this sensor. Now, when I start writing out code that I want to be able to use later, a lot of times I'll take commands that I've executed and I'll go through my command history and create a script out of them. So here I can, I can select the commands that I'm interested in keeping. I always enjoy breaking my scripts into uh, sections using a double percent sign. The thing that's nice about this is I can execute just a section on its own. So right now I already have the variable A which is my connection to the Arduino, so I don't need to run this first section again, but I might want to run the second section again if I start building out code. So for example, say I want to take 500 temperature measurements. I can create a for loop, and at every uh, for every measurement we'll record that in this vector v. Uh, you'll notice that well, it gives me a warning saying I should pre-allocate this in a for loop, especially if I want it to run as fast as possible. So I can preallocate that to an array of zeros. And that would allow me to read 500 measurements. I might also want some timing information. So you may be familiar with the tick and talk functions in MATLAB. They're great for timing and I could use those here. But another really good way to work with dates and times in MATLAB is using date times and duration variables. So I'll show you that option. I can have an initial uh, timestamp, which is the current date time when this is first executed. And then I can build up an array of times, which are the differences from that initial value. Right, and once again, it's telling me I should initialize or preallocate this, uh, this variable. So I can preallocate it as an array of seconds. Okay, so if I run this section, it'll run for as long as it takes to acquire 500 temperature readings. And we see we got 500 uh, durations and 500 voltages, or yeah, voltages. And I still have this code down here which can convert from the voltage to temperature and the nice thing about uh, MATLAB being vectorized is I can take the same arithmetic and simply just run that section and now instead of running it on a scalar it runs it on that whole vector of 500 points. So I have uh, the time and now I have the temperature in Fahrenheit and I can build a plot of that. Okay so this is pretty interesting and there's a couple of things that we can notice about this. One is that uh, the temperature roughly hovered around 70 degrees Fahrenheit as I was acquiring data and um, but we can see there is a bit of noise in the measured signal. Another thing we notice is that uh, it seems 
like values were only measured at a few specific points. The temperature at any point in time was only measured as 69.56 or 70.44 or 71.32 or this, you know, one time we had another spike up here. But it never measured any value in between here. It never measured 70 degrees point zero, for example. So why is that? Well, that actually relates to the quantization of the ADC or the analog digital converter on board the Arduino. So it's a 10-bit ADC, which means it reads in values that are uh, numbers between 0 and 1023. So if we look at 5 volts uh, divided by a range of 1023, we can see that the smallest increment of voltage that it can measure is only about 5 millivolts. Right? And if we look at the way that uh, voltage scales to measure temperatures on this sensor, you see that it's 100 uh, degrees C per volt, 9 fifths degrees Fahrenheit per degree C. That means the smallest increment we can measure is about 0.88 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we're seeing here as the smallest difference between uh, consecutive uh, measurements. Right, so one thing we observe immediately about uh, low-cost hardware is that in some cases um, you don't really get enough precision um, for certain applications. Another thing we'll notice is that this acquired data for about nine seconds. So if I actually look at this t-vector and I take the average difference between consecutive measurements, each measurement came in uh, 0 0.02 seconds after the previous one. All right, and what this means is that if I convert that to a raw number and divide it from one, this means there are about 55 samples per second uh, that I was able to acquire on this device when the only thing I had in the loop was read voltage and a call to daytime. So a sampling frequency of 55 Hertz is, you know, it's not terrible, it's acceptable for many applications. In fact, most of the time that I'm reading in temperature, I don't really need to bring in uh, more than 55 samples per second. Uh, but there are many times when I might want to um, acquire data at a much higher uh, sampling rate. And so for those applications, I might not be able to use this type of low-cost hardware.